Welcome to another Word Defibrillator to kickstart your day with I, Sean Collard. The Word Defibrillator for today, where we <coughs> kickstart your day, heavily with a word from within the word. Yesterday we were talking about above all things, and this is James 5 verse 12 from yesterday, moving on into the next few verses. It's a... Uh, Quite, James is so nice on how it goes from one area, concentrates on it, spills over into another area, then drifts back again and just builds on every foundation that it sets. And it's quite exciting as we go through it. But above all things, my brethren, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be a simple yes and your no be a simple no so that you may not sin and fall under condemnation. And that's meaning is when you say yes to somebody, there's no explanation needed. You don't have to say, I promise you, and definitely on this one's life and that one's life. It's just your yes. If you say yes, stick to it. That's what integrity is. Do what you say. And if you can't do it, don't say it, which is a no. No is the shortest and the most powerful sentence. And we tend to, when we say no, feel that we have to keep relationship and we have to explain why it's no. You don't necessarily have to explain why it's a no. It's a courteous, uh, being courteous if you do. Then it goes in, now we're talking about let you yes be or yes, you no be or no, and then goes into verse 13. Is any one of you, is anyone among you afflicted, ill-treated, suffering evil? And you see the hands go up. Well, he should pray. Is anyone glad at heart? Well, he should sing praise to God. Is anyone among you sick? Well, he should call in the church elders, the spiritual gods, and they should pray over him, anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. And there for me is afflicted. Isn't that the same as being sick? Apparently not. Afflicted is ill-treated, suffering evil. Verse 15, and the prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick, and the Lord will restore him, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Now, we've spoken about this before, but it's very important to understand, is the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is a prayer of faith that has no unbelief. Now, we have faith. Each one of us is dealt a measure of faith. So you and I have faith. But how we use that faith is going to determine. So if you have more unbelief, it's going to seriously conquer your faith. It says the prayer of faith. It's a prayer without any unbelief. And the Bible, we've done a teaching on it. You can go look for it on the, the Word Defibrillator on the CCFM YouTube channel, where it shows us clearly that if you have any unbelief, if your unbelief is any bit stronger than your faith, it's not going to happen when you are praying. And that faith as a mustard seed, if your faith is just a mustard seed size bigger than unbelief, you are going to be able to conquer anything that lays before you through prayer. And the prayer that is of faith, will save him who is sick, and the Lord will restore him, and if he has committed sins, he will, be conf he will be forgiven. Verse 16, confess to one another, therefore, your faults. So now it's saying, if you are afflicted, pray. If you are sick, pray. Now, thirdly, confess to one another, therefore, your faults. It doesn't say sins, it says your faults. Your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. No. Come on. You only get people to pray for you because you uh, are in sin or you really need help. No, it's saying uh, your slips. If you make a bit of a oopsie, tell somebody about it. If you go in the wrong direction, your false steps, tell somebody about it. If you are offending somebody, tell somebody about it. And your sins. And then it says... And pray also for one another. So you discuss, this is what I'm going through. Then you pray for one another. For what reason? Come on. 
Well, here's the answer. That you may be healed and restored to what? A spiritual tone of mind and heart. So the one set of prayer is restoring him, and your sins will be forgiven, and that's the sick. And then it goes, well, if you're confessing and you confess your sins, you will be also restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. So this is now dealing with us physically, emotionally, and now spiritually. The earnest, heartfelt, continual prayer, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Dynamic in its working. Remember, being the amplified version, it's expanding into the Greek and Hebrew. Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed. And it's not a maybe be healed, it's may. That's how you get healed. And restored to a spiritual tone of mind and of heart. So your mind is realigned, so that's mentally, and your heart, spiritually. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous, that's you. You are righteous in Christ. And that makes tremendous power available. And it is dynamic, ever-growing, ever-moving and ever powerful in its working. So as you're working it, it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Hmm. That is huge and huge and huge. Father, hmm. I pray in Jesus' name. Father, that we can overcome that ego, that pride that stops us sitting down in front of somebody and going, I slipped. In fact, Father, we should be starting with you. Lord Jesus, my slips, you know what those are. My false steps, I apologize once again. Forgive me. Father, I have offended once again. And Father, you know that I have sinned. Father, I pray. Holy Spirit, I pray that you pray. You advocate on my behalf. Lord Jesus, for you too in the throne. Lord, we ask you for your grace. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that you have established it for us to be in a place where we can get forgiveness, that we can be restored physically, mentally, and spiritually. Father, for, for something just as simple as a prayer, a prayer of faith. I thank you, Father, that through your spirit that you increase our faith, even if it's just by a mustard seed, increase our, our inner belief that you are God, you are above all. Help us have a fresh understanding, a fresh revelation of who the Lord Jesus Christ is and the power that actually raised him from the dead is also within us, that we can dynamically apply that power in prayer and change the world, our world, around us. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You unravel me.